So if I were to ask someone, why do we need Maven, if I ask a Java developer, what's the point of using Maven? There is a good chance that I'm gonna get one of two answers. I'm gonna get an answer that it is for managing dependencies, or another common answer that I get is that it's a build tool. Okay, Maven is a build tool. It allows you to build Java projects. Well, Maven does have a very popular reputation of being a build tool, but that's actually not the primary goal of Maven. The primary goal of Maven is a project management tool, right? It wants to be a project management tool, managing your Java projects. And what does it mean? What does managing a Java project mean? Let me ask you a question. If I were to say, okay, you're, you're a Java developer, and I say, hey, can you make a Java project for me? Can you create a Java project for me? What do you do? Well, one thing that comes to mind is you open an IDE, right? You open something like IntelliJ and you create a new project or you open Eclipse and create a new, pro new project. But if I were to tell you, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on, I don't, I don't want it to be IDE specific, right? I don't want to be attached to an IDE. I want you to create a project in general which works across IDEs and it's not associated with an IDE, okay? Well, think about it, how would you do it? It brings into question the concept of a project in Java, right? How do you create a project in Java? A typical way is an IDE, of course. An IDE allows you to kind of start with that, right? It, you know, you can give it a name. You say, okay, I'm working on this project. You give it a name of your application. I say, here are all your source code. Here are your test files. So the IDE provides the structure for you. But if you were asked to do this, irrespective of the IDE, right? Have an IDE agnostic concept of a project. Well, how do you do it? Well, it turns out there is no such concept of a project in Java, okay? In Java, you basically throw in a bunch of classes or Java files and then say, okay, these all work together to build an application. Well, that application is in your head, right? It's not something that you manifest as a Java thing, okay? It's just a group of classes, a group of Java files, some XML files, some JSON files configuration, and then you have you know assets and if you're building a web project, the best you can do is put them all in a directory and say, well, here's your project. But then there's a whole lot more that goes to being a project, okay? So think about this. What does a Java project need to consist of? What's the kind of stuff that a Java project needs to consist of? First of all, it has to have the source code, of course, right? All your Java files has to be there. Next. It has to have all their test cases, all your test files, right? If you're using something like JUnit, all your test Java files need to be there. So a Java project needs to consist of this. And are you done? Well, no. Not only do you need to have the files, you also need to have the structure for those files. You need to know which directory contains which files, which files goes where, like if you have assets, you know, where does that go? Images, where does that go? Resources, where does that go? You need a structure for your project. So you're gonna have to manage that hierarchy, manage, okay, I'm gonna designate this to be the source directory and how your assets are managed, how your packages are managed. All those things have to be managed in a Java project, okay? Next, you need to manage libraries and dependencies. Most often, if you're working on a Hello World project, you know, you're, you have just one class, right? You don't need a lot of dependencies, but what if you have a lot of external dependencies, external jars and all that? You're gonna to have to manage that, right? You need to have some way of going to those websites, downloading those jars, adding it to the class path. Well, it's not enough if you just do it once, right? You have to share this project with your colleague. You have to give it to them and say, hey, go download those jars from those websites. They're gonna to have to do all of that themselves, right? So it's another thing that you're gonna to have to manage with your Java project. Is that done? Well, no, you have other stuff. You have configuration, right? There's a lot of configuration that specifies how certain jars work. There is configuration that specifies how your application works, and those configuration files need to reside somewhere, right? This is another thing that you're gonna have to manage. Then you have task running to do. You give somebody a Java folder, which contains all the Java files, and they're gonna say, now what do I do? How do I run this thing, right? Again, you have to tell them, hey, you have to go run these commands. This is how you compile it. Right? Your Java project might have 10 classes or 50 classes. You're gonna have to compile all of them. And then you're gonna have to test, okay, this is a command to test your Java code. This is a command to run your Java code. You need to have the ability to run these tasks. And not just that, you need to have the ability to run those tasks in a uniform way so that if 10 people are working on the project that you've checked into source code, source control, all those 10 people better be running the same commands for building and testing and compiling and all that, all right? And then the final thing 
which is not super important as opposed to the other things that we talked about, still, I think it's a good to have is some kind of a reporting structure, okay? You need some way of reporting and saying, okay, how is my project doing, okay? What are the number of classes that I have? What are the dependencies that I have? What is the pass rate for test cases, right? What is the test coverage? So these are all some kind of reporting that you want when you have something called a project, right? You need some kind of a check for how the project is doing. So these are all the things that any typical Java project would need. And it turns out the language does not have support for a something called the project, at least not in an IDE agnostic way. So this is where Maven comes in. Maven says, I'm gonna manage this project for you. I'm gonna tell you where the source code lies. I'm gonna tell you where the test lies. I'm gonna manage the project structure, manage dependencies, configuration. I have the ability to run commands and then do the building and the testing and all that stuff. And Maven also throws in reporting for good measure, right? So Maven manages Java projects. It takes these group of you know assorted class files and resources and all that and groups them into one thing called a project. And the way Maven does this is using something called the project object model. We're gonna be looking at what the project object model is later in this course, but this is the primary reason why somebody uses Maven, to manage a single thing, give it an entity called a Java project, right? Okay, so Maven manages Java projects. What is it and how does it do it? Well, Maven is an open source project. It's actually an Apache project. And it is something that you can install on your machine and have it manage your Java projects for you. Okay, so how does it do it? Maven provides this structure for any Java project and it manages the contents of that project. Okay, so you know we talked about what are the different things that could be in a Java project. It kind of manages it for you by providing that structure. It comes with this opinion of how that structure should be, where all those different things should go, and then it provides you the structure and it manages it for you, okay? Secondly, it helps manage dependencies for your project. You have a bunch of dependencies on other libraries or frameworks or anything of that sort. You don't have to go to the websites, download, search for jars and all that stuff. Maven has a really elegant solution for managing your dependencies. So Maven is also very configurable. It has this project object model, which it uses to track your project and you can make tweaks to it. It is opinionated, but it listens to you if you say, I want it to do things differently. And then Maven provides these tasks which allow you to do build and compile and deploy and all those things. It comes with a task runner and you can say this is the order in which you want the tasks run. Maven is gonna handle all of that for you. This is not all of course, there's a lot of other features, but these are some of the important things that you should know. Uh, there are certain characteristics of Maven that you should be aware of. So the first characteristic which really stands out is this thing about convention over configuration. What does that mean? It means that there is a certain convention that you can follow when you're working with Maven so that you don't have to tell it a whole lot. As long as you're following the convention, Maven knows all of the necessary information about your Java project, okay? So it is opinionated. It has its own convention. As long as you follow it, no configuration required. But it allows you to configure it as well, okay? So if you say, I don't like this portion of the convention, you can configure it. So it is both a possible, but then if you follow the convention, you don't need the configuration. And that's what convention over configuration means. Maven is very uh, convention over configuration oriented. It comes with a lot of conventions. Uh, that convention makes it consistent. You can go from one Maven project to another Maven project and things are gonna look similar because they're both following that same convention, right? Uh, having said that, you can of course also configure it. It is also configurable. So for example, uh, Maven expects the source directory to always be src main java. Okay, src slash main slash java. That's where your source files should be. That's the convention. If you put your source code in src main java, Maven knows exactly, that, that's where it's looking for source code, right? So it knows exactly where it is, it knows where to find it. But you can configure it to look somewhere else for source code, right? That works too. By default, it is looking at a specific convention. All right, so here are some characteristics, other characteristics of Maven. First of all, it's IDE agnostic. You don't need an IDE to use Maven. You don't need an IDE to create a Java project and build it and deploy it and all that with Maven. With Maven. You can do pretty much the whole development lifecycle without opening an IDE. Uh, at least the syntax highlighting and the autocomplete and all, you will obviously not be there. We open it in a simple text editor, but then all the other stuff, the project management stuff, 
Maven's got your back. It's gonna do all of that work for you. Even though it's IDE agnostic, it is IDE supported. Pretty much every major Java IDE has support for Maven. You can open the Maven project in an IDE and it's gonna treat it just like, uh, the experience is gonna be just like you were opening an IntelliJ project or an Eclipse project. Since Maven is opinionated, the IDE too knows where the source code is and where the test files are and you can easily uh, open Maven projects, work on Maven projects in an IDE, right? All IDEs, pretty much all IDEs support Maven. Uh, Maven also has this concept of declarative dependency management. There's a full unit about dependency management in this course. If you're gonna be looking at how dependency management in Maven is declarative, okay? As opposed to imperative. You know, we have to get a jar and add it to the class path. There are some imperative steps you have to do. Go to the website, download it, copy it. That, those are all the steps you're gonna to have to do. But with Maven, that's not what you do. With Maven, you say, I need Apache Commons. You declare it, you specify your need for Apache Commons, and then Maven is going to go fetch Apache Commons and make it available in your class path, okay? So the way you add a dependency is by declaring it. We'll cover more later in the course. And then finally, Maven has a very plugin-based architecture, right? Most of the features of Maven that we're gonna be looking in this course is all powered by plugins. It adds functionality to Maven and it also makes it extensible. You can have Maven do different things by adding different plugins. And there are a lot of different plugins which allow you to extend Maven. So that's a very plugin-based architecture, plugin-heavy architecture. All right, so these are some of the characteristics of Maven. Let's move on to actually working on Maven. Now that you have a little bit of an idea of what Maven is, we're going to configure our development environment, install Maven, and we'll take it from there. So see you in the next tutorial.